Okay, so now it's time to examine the cementum. So let's recap what the cementum is. If we look at a tooth, what you're going to notice is the root is covered with cementum. So this um, layer, I feel like it's in gray or green, this layer that's covering the root is known as the cementum. Now, why is the cementum important? The reason why cementum is important is because it covers the dentin, and when we covered the dentinal, uh, when we covered the dentin chapter, we saw that if we were to examine the dentin closely, it actually looks um, like this. There's dentinal tubules. There's these tubes that are all around the dentin, and these tubes are open. These tubules are open. So what we need is we need cementum to block these tubules because when cementum blocks these tubules we won't feel any pain we won't feel any sensitivity remember the hydrodynamic theory we looked at where if the tubules are open um, the fluid here can move the and then when the fluid here moves we can sense pain so cementum covers all the dentinal tubules it also if I were to draw, let me just draw um, some lines here. And these lines, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to draw here are the periodontal ligament fibers. So all around the root, we have the periodontal ligament fibers, which if you remember on one end, it is anchored to the cementum. On the other end, it's attached or anchored to the bone, right? Bone and cementum, periodontal ligament fibers is are between the bone and cementum. So another reason why cementum is important is because cementum helps the tooth stay or anchor um, down in the in the socket. So how does cementum occur? Cementogenesis, right? The formation of cementum. How does cementum get formed? This over here is a picture or a diagram of a tooth, tooth germ. Okay, so remember this is your enamel organ, um, this is your mesenchymal cells, also the dental papilla, which makes the pulp and the dentin, and then all around this we have a dental sac or dental follicle. If we re look at the this area over here, so the enamel organ, remember this layer that's in the that's on the outer outer layer is known as your outer enamel epithelium, and this over here is known as your inner enamel epithelium. Well, when the root is getting formed, this gets extended down, and it looks like this. Okay, so the inner and outer enamel epithelium merge together, and they look like this. And what happens is the inner epithelial root sheath so this it, it basically merges and it becomes a root sheath okay so the root sheath is the combination of the outer and inner enamel epithelium so now they have merged here and what you're notice what i want you guys to notice is that the inner epithelial root sheath the cells of the inner epithelial root sheath they actually make cementum they they that's they actually make it the first layer of cementum so these cells over here, the inner epithelial root sheath cells, they form cementum. So they're making cementum right over here. Let's look at it again. The, the cementum that they're making, so let's look at this. This cementum over here that has been made, okay, has been formed by the inner epithelial root sheath. What happens later is that the follicle, okay, so the dental follicle, they have cells, okay, so all around, if I, maybe I could even draw it, so let me take a, let me use a different color, I'm going to draw um, cells, these circles, we're just going to call these circles cells, there's other cells, and these cells come from the dental follicle, so the dental follicle, which is right here, there's cells um, these are the cells that you see in the dental follicle. So they're all hanging around over here. And these cells become, okay, so they can either become cementoblast or they can become fibroblast. These cementoblasts will make additional cementum. Fibroblast will make the fibers, the periodontal ligament fibers. Let's look at this image right here. These are the odontoblast. So remember, 
Odontoblast are right here, the one in purple, and they make the dentin. Odontoblast makes dentin. So Odontoblast here have made dentin. And then we can see um, two layers of cementum. We see the intermediate cementum, which is the first cementum that has been laid. And again, where does the first layer of cementum come from? The inner, it's right here, the inner epithelial root sheath which is like this part right here, it makes the cementum. It makes the cementum first, and then once it makes the cementum, the root sheath disintegrates, like we see here. It becomes, it disintegrates, you can see epithelial vest, where the root sheath have disintegrated. So that's the first layer, intermediate cementum. The other layer that we're looking at over here is known as cellular cementum. And the reason why it's called cellular cementum is because there's cells in there. Intermediate cementum can also be called acellular cementum because there's no cell. When you say a something like a cellular, it means there's no cells in there. Okay, so these are cellular cementum where you can see cells embedded inside. These are cementoblast. If, I, if you remember, remember we said the dental follicle has different cells hanging on the outside. These are the cells. One of the cells can differentiate into or can become cementoblast. And these cementoblasts are hanging out in here and they're actually making these cementum, making cementum. Here's another image where we can see the dentin. So these are the odontoblast, which makes the predentin, which hardens after 24 hours and makes the dentin. We know that acellular cementum is made by the inner root sheet, the inner epithelial root sheet. And we know that the cementoblast, which came from the follicle, the dental follicle, are making cementum. And so the things in blue, what we're looking at is cementum. And cementoblast, um, they actually also, not only do they make cementum, they also make these fibers. So these intrinsic fibers, intrinsic because it's inside the cementum, they're making intrinsic fibers, which is maintained by cementocytes. Let's look at the difference between cementoblast versus cementocytes. If if the cells are inside, embedded in the cementum, it's known as cementocytes. Cementoblasts make cementum, but they're hanging out on the outside. The moment they go inside, it's known as cementocytes. Another thing to note is that in the cementum, we have gaps, we have spaces, and those spaces are known as lacunae. And lacunae have space, that are known as spaces, and in those spaces, cementocytes hang out there. Another fun fact about cementum is that when we look at cementum, they have no blood vessels, they have no nerves, okay, there's nothing <clears throat> like um, like the pulp, it's not like the pulp which has lots of blood vessels and nerves. So cementum is insensitive to pain, it doesn't feel pain. Cementum, we don't feel pain when, or cementum doesn't feel pain. It's also avascular. It doesn't have any blood supply, so we call it avascular. Now, when we look at the relationship of cementum and enamel, so here's cementum, here is the crown, okay, which is covered in enamel, okay? The outer layer of the crown is enamel. I want you to remember OMG. The first thing, the first relationship that can happen between cementum and enamel is overlap. So here's cementum, and maybe this isn't the greatest image, but cementum can overlap. So it can kind of go over here and overlap the enamel. So the cementum is now covering the enamel. That's what happens majority of the time. So the most common type of relationship between the cementum and enamel, where it overlaps 60% of the time. Or it could just meet. So there's no overlap. The cementum just touches the enamel. It's like an edge-to-edge -edge relationship. It's just meeting the enamel. This happens 30% of the time. And less frequently, we can have a gap. Here, they're meeting. Sorry, here they're overlapping, here they're meeting, and here there's a gap, which happens 10% of the time. And so whenever there's a gap and the dentin is exposed, remember the dentinal tubules are over here, that's exposed, so we're going to feel sensitivity at that time. So when you have a gap, sensitivity occurs. Okay, so let's just recap one more time. If we were to look at the cementum that's deposited right over here, it's a thin layer. 
Okay, it's non-cellular, it's acellular, there's no cells in that cementum. And where did it come from? It came from the inner layer of the epithelial cells, so the inner layer of the epithelial cells of the root sheet. Then they disintegrate into epithelial rest, they disintegrate and they move away. Um, another interesting thing is when we look at the protein that helps the cementum thrive, it's known as enamelin. And enamelin is the same protein that helps with the enamel, right? Because if you think about it, this enamelin, this is your enamel organ, okay? And it, remember this, the inner and outer epithelial cells form the root sheet. So kind of the, because it comes from the outside, because it's an epithelial sheet, epithelial means the, out, the outer layer, um, this it makes the protein enamelin, which is the protein that supports cementum. So ju just know that enamelin is the protein for cementum. If we look at cementum in the acellular, well actually let's look at the acellular cementum, which is the one that we see on top, which is the one that we see coronal. This is apical. You're going to see that the coronal one is very thin. The cementum laid over here is very thin. It's only 30 to 60 microns. But if we look at the apical part of the cementum, which is known as a cellular cementum, it's a lot thicker, right? It's 150 to 200. But what I'm trying to highlight to you is this is your apical canal, your root canal. The cementum, if we keep getting depositing cementum over here, cellular cementum, which can happen because of trauma. So if there's trauma to this area, constant uh, grinding happening here, the opposing tooth is like putting a lot of pressure on this tooth, it compensates it. The, the cementum tries to compensate it by depositing more cementum here, more cellular cementum here. And if we get a lot of deposition of cementum, it can block that apical canal. So as the cementum thickens, um, the cells can be trapped within the structure of the cementum. So we're getting more and more cementum getting deposited, and then this, the cells, known as cementocytes, that are trapped in here. Okay, so cementoblasts create cementocytes, and cementocytes get trapped here. If we look at cementocytes, and if we had to examine it really closely, Typically, cells have lots of organelles, the mitochondria and the nucleus, the um, Golgi apparatus, so many different things. But interestingly enough, cementocytes that, that are way deep within the cementum, they actually have fewer organelles. Cementum is deposited in increments, in layers, in rhythmic deposition, they say. So we have like a layer of acellular cementum, then a layer of cellular cementum, a layer of acellular or intermediate cementum, then a layer of cellular cementum. So it's in layers and it alternates. If we look at the color of cementum, so this is the root, and if we look at the color of cementum that's surrounding the root, it's yellow and it is lighter, slightly lighter in color compared to dentin, which is right underneath the cementum. Now when we age, we're going to get more cementum because there's more trauma in our mouth, more we're grinding, we could be grinding more, putting a lot of pressure on our teeth. So what happens is naturally cementum will get deposited in those areas, cellular cementum will get deposited. And so as they're deposited, so sometimes what happens is they stop depositing and you'll see like a line and then they'll start depositing again and then they'll stop depositing cementum and you'll see another line and then uh, it's, it's a cycle of um, deposition, resorption, deposition, resorption. And so this, these lines that we're looking at are known as reversal lines, which indicate when they stopped depositing cementum. And now they're going to go back and deposit cementum again, and then they're going to stop depositing cementum. Cementicles are basically calcified, so hard ovoid or round, so like an egg shape, or it could be a round nodule, and it could be found in the periodontal ligament fibers. So these are the periodontal ligament fibers, these purple lines that are between, or anchored between the cementum and the bone. So these cementicles, it could be in the periodontal ligament fibers, it could be attached to the cementum, so very close to the cementum, or it could be completely inside the cementum, okay? so. These cementicles can really be found anywhere, but it is found typically with the aging population. Or if someone had a lot of trauma to this tooth, then you might find cementicles in this area. 
Lastly, whenever there is trauma, so a cavity or lots of pressure being put onto the tooth, or if a tooth has hyper erupted and just, you know, kind of gone out of the socket, then what happens is cementoblasts will keep building or keep making cementum. And so sometimes when they're making more cementum, what they're going to do is they're going to try and cre create a smooth surface. They're going to try to create a smooth surface on the root. So this is your root surface. This is the dentin. This is the root. And what the this is cementum being deposited. And you can see, if you look at the edges of the cementum, it is a smooth surface. And that's what the cementoblasts try to do. They try to maintain a smooth surface of the root whenever there's trauma to that tooth. We were to draw the pulp. Maybe I should draw the 